Let's learn how we can create a package-based monorepo with an X. So for a package-based monorepo, we could actually go ahead and create the entire structure on our own, meaning the packages folder have a root-level package JSON where we configure our npm, yarn, or pnpm workspace, and then just get going. Annex, however, comes also with a nice and handy preset that gets that stuff set up for us, so we don't have to do it by hand. And you can do that by leveraging the create annex workspace command here. I'm giving the name to my workspace uh, package based. You can call it the name of your organization. Very often, since this is like a set of packages you might want to publish to NPM, this is also the scope of your NPM registry. The key part here is to use the preset NPM. I also might want here to opt into the remote caching. And then finally, we should get our workspace. So let's have a look what we got. We got an empty packages folder for now. At the root level package JSON, we have already the workspaces set up. So this is an NPM workspaces setup where it defines that our packages folder will be the one hosting the NPM packages such that we can locally link them. We have the dev dependencies defined. So for now, there's the main one, which is NX, which are we using for managing this monorepo. We have NX Cloud here because we opted into the remote caching. And we also have prettier setup, which is kind of handy for the whole formatting issues. But let's actually go ahead and create our first package. Now, in a package-based monorepo, you just create the folders as you need them. So in my case, I'm going to create an is even and is odd package, not very creative, but it will help us show us the main use cases for such a simple monorepo setup. Now, the first thing I might want to do here is to create the package JSON. Because in a package-based monorepo setup, all the packages have their own package JSON, their own build scripts defined, as well as all of their dependencies. So our package JSON here is pretty simple. It has the name of the package. It might have a version. Usually, if we link things locally, we can just depend on the latest version. It has here the path to the actual build output, which will be in the disk folder, which we'll see in a second. And this is important because our other packages will depend on the pre-built output of the packages that they're using. So we need to make sure to always have that in place. Finally, there's also the script section here. For now, we just have a build script that uses the TypeScript compiler to convert our index.js file and put it into that output disk folder. Now let's create that index.ts file actually. And the setup here is super simple, basically just a function that computes whether a number is even or not. Now, since we're using TypeScript, we need to make sure that we have that installed. Now, either we have it installed as a dependency, as a dev dependency for the package here, or if it is more of a global package that all of our packages use, we can also install it at the root level package JSON. So let's do just that. And we can use npm install TypeScript, we install it as a dev dependency. And we might also want to pass that W, which instructs NPM, especially if we are in an NPM workspace, to install it at the root level. So now that we have these things in place, we can just go ahead and build our package. We can run npx nx, run the build command, and that build command would just find that corresponding script in a package JSON. And then we give it the name of the package that we want to build, which is is even in this case. And so this is basically the name of our package in the package JSON. And so this now runs this build command and it would produce the compiled index.js file in that disk folder. Now let's actually look at a more interesting case where we can link packages locally. So I'm going ahead and just copy this and create an is odd package. And in the package JSON of our is odd package, we have the very same setup. Obviously, we changed the name here to is odd. It would also be compiled to that this folder here. So that remains the same. However, we have now a dependency. And our dependency should point to the is even package. And we can use here the star because we want to really depend on the latest version that is in our workspace rather than a specific one. So why have this dependency? Well, because I want to leverage the export of our is even function to use it in computing our is odd function. And so what I want to do is import here the function in our index.js file of our is odd package. And then in our computation of is odd, I just leverage the function, but invert the result. We now have a dependency from is odd to is even. Now, if you have NX console installed, you can actually go ahead and visualize that in directed the NX console extension. So you can see that visually represented, 
You can also just run NX graph to visualize the same in a browser window. So what this means usually is that whenever we run the build of is odd, we also want to make sure that is even is computed beforehand. Now this can mean running the command just manually, but we ideally want to define this such that it is completely automated. And this is what is usually called task dependencies, also often named task pipeline. And we can define that in the NXJSON file here. So by going here in here and defining a target defaults property, we can specify the script for which we want to define the configuration and then add here a depends on property and say that this should depend on the build property of its children or dependencies. So with that carrot symbol in front, we define exactly that. As a result now, if we run the build of is odd, you will see it will first compute the is even package and then build the is odd package. Most interestingly also, since we have defined these cache operations initially when we set up our workspace here with the preset, we can rerun the same computation and what would happen is that that computation is being cached. So it hasn't run again, you can see it is super fast and it has just been pulled out of the cache directly. Now you might be wondering how we can run multiple tasks and not just single ones. So single tasks can just be run by defining here the project and the actual build script, but we can also use the run many and then just define a target that we want to run, in this case, build. And this would run the build for all the projects that are in my workspace. Now, again, you can see these are cached. So again, it's super quick, but you can also bypass that cache for now by running the annex skip cache command here. And so it would compute them again on the fly. So this was a high level overview of how you can create a package-based monorepo with an X. We've seen how to set it up, how you create local linking packages, how you can use NX to run build scripts and package JSON scripts, how you can run multiple of them, how caching helps with speeding things up, and much more. There's some more links for in-depth guides which you can find in the description of the video. Also, if you're curious about an integrated type of monorepo setup that NX is capable of doing, go and check out our docs on nx.dev.